All right, so today we're gonna finish this plate. So I threw this plate last time, and then today we're going to finish it, and there's a couple things that are different about finishing plates, right? The first thing is you'll see that it's still, oh, it's actually not stuck to the bat. I was happily hoping that it'd still be stuck to the bat, but this one, what I did was, how did I get it to this stage? It's like perfect for what I need to do. I forgot to cover it at all. I just left, and it even, on Tuesday, I just left, left it out, and so I never covered it. And then, so I got the school today thing. Oh, this morning I better uncover it and leave it out so that it'll be ready to trim. And I got, and that's when I realized I didn't cover it. So it is ready to go right now, just uncovered for two days. So whatever our condition is perfect for drying out plates in there. So let me pick it up. So this bat, right, you see, because I was, remember when I was trimming or cutting it off, I had the bat spin slowly as it came off. So that means there isn't too much thickness left here. We didn't really talk about this, but there will still be some thickness left behind. So let me use one of these trimming tools. I'm just gonna use it to carve off a small section right there down the middle. No matter what you do, the wire has a tendency to bow upwards in the middle and you end up leaving more clay, a thicker hunk of clay here in the middle behind. No matter how good you try to wire it off or how tight it is. Just natural for the wire to bow upwards. So that's why we make the plates maybe just a little bit thicker to account for that. So this came off the bat. So now, a lot of times when you're touching the inside now, we tried to make it as flat as possible, but a lot of times we will come back and we will trim the inside flat. So normally we don't do that with bowls because bowls it's hard when you trim for the trimmings to go anywhere and they get in the way. But since this is mainly a flat and open object, I have the option for trimming. You notice that I'm using a foam bat. For plates, foam bats work really good, right? Because the foam bats rely on weight of the object to sink into the foam and that's what holds it in place, right? So you don't wanna trim cups on foam bats because they just flip off, they don't stick. Or really light objects, they don't stick. But very wide-ish objects that have a little bit of weight work great on these foam bats. So we're gonna use a foam bat. The foam bats, you've probably seen them, they're over, they're over on the um, area by the, where we keep the rest of the bats. So you can see we use the same system with the, where the three goes up. Oh, I didn't turn on my wheel. So where the three, right, same system to get these guys down. So this guy, we usually will stick the bat down first, like that. So, so that's on, and then I have to just manually drop this guy on, right? Just like that. So since it's dry enough, I can just handle it like this. Ooh, 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 I forgot to tell you. If your plate is a little bit wet, let's say you already cut it off, you waited a little bit, it's dried out some, but it's maybe not drying out fast enough, just putting it outside right set up is usually not a good idea because the rim dries really fast. So one way we can speed up drying, I don't have to do that, do it on this one, is I get another bat, and you'll notice that this bat is actually bigger than my first bat, right? I want a bigger one because this plate is bigger than the bat underneath, so we have bigger, slightly bigger bats, and then I sandwich them together. You see that? So bat, plate, bat. And then what I'm gonna do is, we'll get this pulled back so you guys can see me a little bit better. Let's see here, if we could do this. Er, 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 er. Right, so here, what I'm gonna do is I'll lift it up, so right, so plate on the bat, right? Then I put this bigger bat on top, the bat has to cover the whole rim, right? So the rim is smaller. And I put both hands above and under, and I could do this where I, I kind of flip it over really fast, right? And then I could take this first bat off, right? And now I can let it dry upside down. So this is if your plate was too wet just to pick up. So then I will leave this plate out like this to let it dry, because it's the bottom that dries the slowest, right? There is a chance of it slumping. So you want to wait a little bit so that the chance of it slumping is not great, right? This, I should have flipped it over actually, because now that I'm feeling this part here in the middle inside of the plate, this area is a little bit wet still. This inside part will be the wettest right here. That makes sense to everybody? 
So I should have left it out like this and that would allow this bottom part to dry faster. So we're not going to do that, right? We're going to pull this off in a second and then I'm going to stick the, oh, this fat's already on. So for right now though, I'm going to trim the, the inside part. So I'm going to flip it back over onto there. And since it's dry enough, I can just pick it up. So you do not want, sometimes I can trim this inside part while it's still a little bit wetter than this. While it's still attached to this bat here, I can trim it sometimes. But since it already fell off the bat, I have to trim it on the foam bat. So I set it on like that. And then I got to center it, but I have to center it manually. There's a thing called tap centering, which I can't do really well on a foam bat. I can do it a little bit, but it's a little bit hard. Okay, I guess I can. So, or you could do it with your finger, right? Touching, touching, touching. And then what I would do is for the foam bat, I just gotta manually slide it. So if your rim and the inside are doing different things, like sometimes your rim is not quite the same round, round I will center it to this part here, right? And the same thing with doing a bowl, you center it to the part where you're working on. Right, so here, I, I'm just gonna center it to the outside. Touching, so then I have to move it over a little. I'll move it over a little. Getting closer, I'm gonna tap center because it's driving me nuts, not the tap center. All right, so that's good enough. So now I can take one of these big boy trimming tools. And so it usually for me, the way I throw is always this middle ends up thinner out here gets a little bit progressively thicker. That's just the way I do it. So what I'll do is I'll start trimming from the inside, this inside out and try it's trimming to the center. So I will use maybe this chubby part here of the trimming tool and just trim away like this. You see that? So I'm trying to make it flat and even, and this is perfectly acceptable to do, especially if the plate's big. So now you see I'm trimming this way, this part of the tool will get caught up on the rim. So I'll flip it over and use this curve here. Trimming it down, trimming it down, just to make it so it's about even thickness, right? It's not going up. And then we'll talk about what we're gonna do about this part of the rim here in a second. So do it again, it's getting, be it's getting better. They're getting better. So I do put throwing line, trimming lines in here. So let's get a close up view. It does end up putting some trimming lines in on this, right? So that's not necessarily the best thing. They're gonna focus there. So you can see the trimming lines there. We'll take care of those in a minute. And then here, I'm just gonna trim this out to here just a little bit more, right? And you can really see there's a trim line here at this outside edge. So we'll take care of that too. So this is feeling a little bit flatter. Maybe there's a little bit of a rise here. So this is one of those things where I say you could see better with your fingers and with your eyes. So when you look at it, it looks flat, but when I feel it, I feel all the waviness because my fingers kind of go right as I go. So I can feel there's a little swell up there as they come out. So I'm just, now I'm getting close though. So I'm gonna switch to the flat part of this and lay it down the trim. And that will help get rid of the throwing lines in this and on the trimming lines in here. Cause it, I don't want it to look like I trimmed it. I want it to look like it just was, I was a good person and it just turned out this way naturally, right? That you got mad skills, right? So ultimately the best goal is for you to be able to throw this and make it without having to do this. But a lot of times this is what you got to do to make it good, right? So there is no rules about, oh, you can't do that or that's cheating or whatever. Just do whatever you need to do to make your pot awesome, right? So for plates, we can trim the inside super easy. So why not? So that's starting to feel flat. Now I have to start thinking about this curve here, right? This curve has a very low curve, right? It doesn't like swoop up really tall. So I'm going to take like the heel of this tool and work it in there like that to trim that off and be as gentle as I can when I trim it. Ooh, I put, so here, I'm just gonna use the heel like this and trim, trim, trim. And I'm trying to just make it a nice scoop out like that. Not taking off a lot. I'm not necessarily, ooh, there's a little bit of a bump here. So I'll come back here and trim that bump out. So if I'm making a lot of plates, this takes time, right? So if I need to make 10 plates or something, I do not want to do this because this adds how many minutes to each one. If I'm trying to work in a rush, right? 
But if I'm just making one and it needs to be really good, I'll just go ahead and just do this sort of action on every single one a little bit, especially if it's not looking good. All right, so that's looking like I feel it now, that curve is looking good. Then I'll switch to my metal rib and I'll flex it and I'll hold it at a right angle and use it like a trimming tool. If we get down here, maybe we could see it a little better. Oh, where, where will I be in camera? So here. See that I'm using it like a trimming tool. You can see the scrap starting to stick to there. So let's clean that off, right? So I'm trying to trim this, so make it flat, right? Really flat, So I, because you can still see some of the trimming marks there. There we go, look at that, oh, beautiful, right? Trimming it off, we'll back away, we get a back away view more. There we go, ah, there we go, something like like that all right so there there we go so there now i have to fit this curve so i will flex this like this see to fit this curve really good and i'll come in here like that trim 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 there we go getting there and i'll pick that up right so this is i'm trying to establish this as a nice beautiful curve here now you have to watch out because uh, by doing this, the edge of this blade gets really sharp, right? Because I'm almost like sharpening this blade over and over and over again. There we go. Getting there. All right, so I'm just feeling it, right? Just like I said, you could feel it with your hand. So it's just a little bit of a bump right there. So I'll come back here and just try to knock that bump down. Ooh, I trimmed off a lot. We'll see how that feels in a second. Oh, it's almost there. Okay, so I think we're there, right? So I'm feeling once again with my finger. There's always a problem trying to get the very center. So sometimes I just, just scrape across the center in multiple directions very lightly. So that part's good. And then let's think about the rim. So we want the rim to be, I usually want the rim perfectly flat. So I'll switch to this flat part and just hold that flat part down against the rim. Because I just like it flat. There's no, I just think that's the way to do it. But there's like, I don't like a scoopiness to it. Usually I usually flatten it out right at the end. Right, and then so I'll scrape it. And if you can figure out a way to make it scoopy and for it to work, that's okay. But for something that's wide open and flat like this, I don't want it turning up. I want it pretty flat. It's never exactly flat, meaning because there always is a slight turn up. It always is at an angle elevated up a little. And we talked about why you can't make a really flat rim last time. Right, it just collapses right away. So you can see that I'm using the back side of the rib to really put the finishing touches on this. You can see all the clay coming off, so it's almost there. All right, so now I'll just come by and clean up everything because now I have to really smooth it out because if you look really closely, there are like little trim lines and where the clay was getting dragged through, right, the particles. So there's those trim lines. So we'll get rid of all those trim lines here. So here, make sure, make sure. So first I'm gonna clean up all the crumbs. Clean up all the crumbs. And then I'm gonna wet it just a smidge, right? Cause I could try to use this rib, but I'll just wet it just a little bit. You see that how I'm adding a little bit of water. And then from the inside out, I use this rib and I lay it flat to really smooth it out. And then I work it from the middle and I go out like that. The wetness helps uh, soften the surface so it can really compact down. And the clay will can establish a little burnish, like it could be a little bit shiny even when you do this. I have to be very careful with the amount of water because plates are really susceptible to cracking. So I'm not soaking it, right? I'm just using a little bit of water, a little bit of water. And this will help fill in all the seams. So when you look at it, it just looks beautiful and smooth now. The one thing I forgot to do is I forgot to deal with the rim, right? And so I think the rim's actually okay. So I'm just using my finger to round it off. All right, so it looks okay. So now we're done with that side. So now we're gonna flip it over onto a bat. Now the foam bat isn't quite big enough. You guys see that? 
foam bat is too small for this. The foam bat will sit just a little bit in from the rim and I don't wanna do that. I could do it just fine, but I'm gonna switch back. I'm gonna to switch to this bigger bat and flip it and put it on. Yes. Yes, I know, but I wanna show them how to do it this way too. So you could, flipping it over onto a foam bat and trimming it on the foam bat will work just like this one. It just sits on the foam. But I'm gonna do it like this, right? It's not that there is a foam bat. I wanna show you how to trim it on, not on a foam bat, because I assume you guys know how to do that now, right? So, because not, we'll, we won't always have a foam bat to trim on, because there's a couple things you gotta think about when just sticking it on one of these guys. So, I gotta make sure it lines up. Oh, I gotta do a couple things. I should just have stuck this bat down. Because, there it is. There it is. All right, so I'm gonna pull this off for a second and we're gonna talk about this guy. All right, so here what we're gonna do is, let's back this camera away a little bit. What we're gonna do here is if, uh, we have a plate like this, right? It comes, drops down and there's a solid thing. We wanna usually for a plate like this, put the foot the opposite of where the turn starts. So flat, 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 flat. And then here, right, it scoops up that's where we wanna put the foot. So let's look at it this way, right here, right? It's flat, 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 and it starts to turn there, that's where you put the foot. That way, when it's resting on the table, right, you can go down and, and replicate that, the turn there, right, where it turns, rim, turn, and then that's where the foot goes at the end of the turn. It is a little bit too far. It's because I did this little neat trick where I put a little whoosh in there. So the actual outside of the foot, right, is there, but I, I trimmed it in to have this little flourish at the end. You guys see that? And I think that looks really nice, so I do that a lot on my plates. And you got all this real estate anyways, and it, yeah, so it's just a smidge inside, but no one's gonna notice, right, when it sits inside, right? And you see how the inside and outside parallel each other, it's always about the same thickness all the way across, right, when you trim. So how do I find that? I, have, I just, if I can pick my plate up in the air, I'll put my finger on the inside where the curve starts, you see that? And I'll put my finger on the outside exactly opposite, you see that? This finger should be exactly, you see that, how they're opposite each other? And then I'll just roll my finger down and then mark it with my fingernail exactly where I think the outside of the foot shall be. You see that, how I marked it? And then that will be the ring that I do there. So here, now I'll put it down on here like that, and then hopefully, this is actually should be pretty easy to center because it's almost the same size as the bat, right? So it's easy for me to judge. And then I could just center it up. I made it worse. Ooh, that's right on the money. Let me get some clay out because we're gonna attach this one down with clay. And I have some good clay for it right here. So, I still use the same three blob technique, right, for this. But there's something, there's a little trick to this so you don't break your rim, right? So when we attach these, I'm gonna make three blobs of clay, right? Sometimes I call them like turd size, right? They're turd, they're like they're poop sized balls of clay. Now when I attach this, I do, I wanna make sure the clay is sitting on the outside of the rim. Right, so let's look at this. See here that it, the clay is outside like that because if I put this clay over the rim, which is really easy, let's say I have a flat piece that I've been using for a while, I could put it over. So you see how it's riding over the rim. If I push down here on the rim, that rim will collapse and crack. And that's happened to me many, 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 many times. So anytime where you have a flat rim, make sure this clay sits on the outside of the rim, like out here, right, out here. And then you push down out there as well. Do you guys see that? That I'm not pushing on the rim. Danger, 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 danger. I've lost so many beautiful plates doing that. And also with bowls that have a very flat rim, right? So I make the, these three chunks of clay, I'm pushing outside the rim, right? Down, 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 down. So this is the reason why I wanted to show you on a non-foam bat, right? Because this is something that's a little bit different. All right, so those are attached. Then I gotta find my fingernail mark, which is right 
which is right here. That's my fingernail mark right there. And then I just hold in place and I draw a line at the fingernail mark. So that's gonna be the outside of my foot. And I can patrol in and that could be the inside of my foot right there, right? I can trim out inside of that. I can trim out all of this, right, from the inside of that. And then I'll trim out the outside of this here, right, out there. And I leave this section here. Okay, so let's talk about trimming. Now, if you look at this from the side, I actually, if you get really down low and look at it from the side, which is hard to do, these blobs are kind of sticking up in the air above my rim, makes it hard for me to trim into that area. So just realizing that I probably am going to half these blobs and make the coil much lower. You see that like that? See how much lower that is? And I'm gonna push it down so that it's about the same height as the rim, just to give myself some extra space to trim because I might have to trim into this area here a little bit. So there, push down, push down, push down, push down, push down, push down. This one's too close, move it over there. And push down, push down, push down. All right, so three blobs, I'm gonna flatten this one out a little. All right, so that just gives me more room to move around in here with my tool. All right, so I can trim off this big blob here so I can just happily trim away. Right, this is all super extra, so where am I trimming? I am right now trimming way out here. If we look at this, I'm trimming out here into this area right now. I'm not close to that area yet. So trim, trim, trim. So I'm being pretty aggressive. You don't have to be this aggressive. This leaving this plate out was, a, was perfect because this clay is like in the perfect dryness for plate trimming time. So there, I trimmed, I got close to my line. You guys see that? And let's go there so we can see a little better. So I'm trimmed up down to the line. I don't know if that you have used, but. Yep, I am. So that's why I left this so wide, wide enough. And I'll probably leave it. I'll probably stop leaving a little bit short of my inside. Because when I do that, that's going to gobble up some of the width, right? So then I start trimming this. And so you can't trim too quick, right? The wheel is... This clay out here is really whipping around, right? And this clay tool, trimming tool, can only trim off so much at a time. And I just knocked off one of my things, right? It can only trim off so much at a time. So the wheel speed, you might need to keep it slower. But now I'm going pretty fast because I wanna get this done quickly so that you guys aren't like bored out of your minds, right? But I, you gotta take it easy, normally. So here we are. I'm gonna trim, 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 trim. So I'm trying to remember what the inside profile was like. It definitely was not this chubby up there. So since I'm at this line here, I'm gonna start trimming down and establishing the outside of the foot. And my end screen. So here, I'm gonna turn this tool and use this corner here and start trimming straight down here to start the outside of the foot. Then the outside of the foot will start rising out of the clay. You see that, how the outside foot is now coming up? There we go. There we go. So now let's try a different tool. So these are like the regular trimming tools we all know. We have these awesome, awesome, awesome tools. As these are basically these little right angle trimming tools like this. You see them? What is going on here is you see how this tool here, oh, this tool, let me see if we can fix that. This tool here is a flat piece of metal here. You see that? And a flat piece of metal on the back, but then it has two like sharp sides. Like you see how there's a sharp, sharpened edge there. You can't really see it in camera. And a sharpened edge here. You guys have all seen them, right? Flat on the back, flat on top, but with an angle and then an angle. So that creates a sharp edge. So these guys are the same. When you look at it, this is flat side, there's a flat side, and then there's an angle on this side and an angle on this side. These tools are better because it's a better quality metal, so they stay sharper for longer. And this front face here is also sharpened, right? So you see, oh, there, oh, it was there for a second. 
So this camera is having a rough time. Oh yeah, see how it's sharper there, sharper there, sharper there. So what does that mean? What's the advantage? Well, the tool generally stays sharper for longer. So they're, they're in better condition usually. So in the beginning, students don't even know about these. So it's just us mainly. So what do we do with this? As I can use this surface here, um, off camera, there we go. I could use this surface here to trim downward, down here. Right, and I could also use this vertical surface here to trim against there. So you guys will see it here in a second. Let's get this down and up. So then I trim here and I could trim both surfaces at the same time. And then by doing that, I can get a nice clean surface here and I can get a nice clean surface there. It's amazingly fun. These tools are in this toolbox that says return to office. And then, but we don't return it to office. We keep it right by where we keep the bats now. So that usually lives in there. So now already I can't get in here with that. This tool is too wide. So I got to switch back to the other one. Uh, I can switch back to this guy and just trim this. So now I have my foot. Now I can establish the curve, right? So I'm going to start trimming this part here on here, this curve down into here. So I establish the outside of my foot and I'm going to establish this part of the curve on my plate. So here we go. Trim, trim, trim. Trim, trim, trim. Trim, trim, trim. Trim, trim, trim. It's almost there. I feel like I'm almost there. This tool is acting goofy. It's like leaving lots of lines. It's really dull, that's why. I flipped it, it's doing a little bit better. All right, so now I'm very into margins and how things meet up and things. So I'm very much concentrated on this being smooth and then this makes a beautiful turn and makes that. So I'm really focusing now on how this part comes into this part and then making a beautiful curve here and how then it rolls into the foot. All right, so here I'm just gonna, we're almost done with this part. So being very gentle now, just trimming it for shape, not trimming it for, not trimming it so that it, um, ooh, that's interesting. I just used that corner and trimmed a little line right there. Ooh, I like that. All right, we got rid of it though. All right, so now this part I think matches the, the inside profile of the plate. And now I'm gonna trim this inside surface. There's a lot of trimming that needs to be done with these plates, right? So when I trim this, right, this is gonna end up being the super wide horizontal area, right, that has a cavity underneath. So this, if this clay, if I'm too aggressive, will have a tendency to collapse downward, right? So I start trimming in the middle and I trim outward and I'm very conscious of if this clay is collapsing downward. Now, I just through experience know that this clay is hard enough that it won't collapse as long as I leave some thickness here, right? That if I leave it about this thick all the way across, like the trimmed one, it will be fine, it won't collapse. But if your clay is too soft, it will start collapsing right away. So I always start by trimming in the middle. So here, start trimming in the middle and go outward. So there's a lot of clay for me to trim out, so I'm gonna be a little bit aggressive, more aggressive than you guys should be. So I'm using the round side because that's easiest to control when you start trimming. And I could use the round side on this, on this trimming tool, or I could use the round side on this trimming tool. Why? Well, because the round side, lots of people use the round side on this tool, right? It's a lot, it's like people's favorites. This people, when people use this tool, they mainly use it flat against the surface, right? That's what we think it's used for. That means most people aren't using this part right here, my fingers touching. This area is usually pretty sharp still. The other area that's really sharp still is this area. So I learned in undergrad when I was like in this level class, less like you guys, that we didn't have many sharp tools. So I learned to use the, this round side because almost no one holds the tool this weird cockamamie way. You see how I'm holding it weird? Like, and I, so I'm all, I'm just, oh, maybe I'll do it this way, right? So the, like the, the handle of the tool is parallel to the surface I'm trimming. And then I could use this sharp chubby side that makes sense every, it was like my big discovery. And even though I show people this, almost no one uses this. So I try to show every class. And you notice I, I'm, I'm trimming lefty now, right? 
Trim lefty, I'll switch to righty for a minute. minute. So the good thing about being lefty is that you have to learn how to do a lot of things righty. So like right-handed, left-handed scissors. If you give a pair of left-handed scissors to a left-handed person, they would almost have as hard a time as you guys because right-handed people had to learn how to use, left-handed people had to learn how to use right-handed scissors. It's only like in third grade, there's like two years in your life where they give you left-handed scissors. And after that, like you're in fifth grade, there's no such thing as left-handed scissors anymore. Oop, I dug it out. So I'm not as used to that. So here I'm doing this, I'm just gonna start trimming away. Now, how much do I trim out? Well, I, if you want to, you, I like to glaze the insides of the feet, but that means you need to have some clearance. So you get a flat thing and you wanna look and you see if we get down low, there isn't enough clearance there really for me to glaze that bottom of my foot. So I need, if I want to have glaze across the bottom inside, I wanna trim out more. So here we go, let's trim out some more. Right, ooh, let's switch over to these tools here, right? Let's use these sharper tools now, right? And these tools work the same way. I'm actually more comfortable with these tools than the other ones. Oh yeah. There we go. So I'm gonna switch, I'm gonna switch back to this chubby one, because that seemed to be working really good. So then every once in a while, I'm gonna check. Now I'm stigmatic, meaning that my eyeballs, see everything is curved. Everything curves in space and my glasses try to compensate for it, but it's still, everything's weird, right? So I never trust myself about flatness, right? Everything does, nothing looks flat. And then in my brain, it's just learned how to interpret it that way. So I always use a ruler. It's very hard for me to tell if this is bowing upward or downward or whatever. So I use a straight edge, rest it. And so that is about the minimum amount of clearance that I would want if I were going to glaze the foot inside of here because the glaze takes up space, right? When I put a layer of glaze and then the foot may sag a little or there may be an imperfection on the shelf that comes up into that space and would cause me a funky spot there. So you wanna give yourself a break and have some vertical. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little bit more vertical on this. All right, so we'll do one more good trimming here round. There we go, almost there. I'm switching to this way. Ooh, it's getting saggy. So I can feel it moving now. The clay is sagging down a little bit in certain places. So I know that I got to chill because as you, because since this is a wide surface, sometimes it, it warps downward from the pressure of trimming. So now I'm just going to clean it up, right? So it looks pretty good. The depth is about right. So I'm going to take the flat side of this and just go across the middle and clean up the whole thing. Right, I'm not trying to trim off a lot here. I'm just trying to trim off all the high spots to make it beautiful. Beautiful counts for something, right? So there we go. So that's good enough. So I would normally work on that more smooth. So now let's talk about the foot. So this is trimmed out. I could smooth that out, but we're gonna skip that step. Now I have my foot. Now you see, I left my foot a little bit thick so that I could do that little trimming trick. So I'm first gonna tidy it up, right? I haven't done, let's get really close on it. I haven't done much tidying up on it yet. So I'm gonna do some tidying upness on it. Let's see if we can get this to look, I don't know. What's going on here? All right, here we go. So I'm gonna trim a little bit from the outside here to round it off. Take care of this inside like that. So it kind of rolls up and so there's a rounded edge right here. And then I'm gonna trim this. Ooh, this inside part, ooh, ooh, ooh. I could use one of these guys because it has a vertical edge and a horizontal edge. I can just bring that corner into there and I can trim a very beautiful, oh, that's so good. Trims it so beautifully. So now uh, we can use a lot of different tools. So remember I was gonna say, I was gonna put this curved edge in there, right? Like back up a little, lift it up a little. Right, so I'm gonna put this little like scoop out here, right? So that looks like this on the outside. I love that. So I could do it on any number of ways, but any curved trimming tool will work. 
and I just trim that scoop in using that part of it, and I just bring that scoop into there like that. So watch, just trim off that corner and use that scoop all the way down. So you can see the scoop already starting and I just keep dropping and pushing it in and you can do a whole scoop, you can do a little scoop, you can do a lot of scoop. See that how, and I like to leave a little notch there, right? So why, it just came from the glaze, when I was glazing, it just, the glaze just pools there for, right? The glaze collects in that and forms a thicker spot which is awesome. And it's nothing having to do with nothing, right? It's just me and I like it. It doesn't make the plate function any better, but it's just for me. And that's what you really got to think about. That's what makes you, you, yours, you, the littlest decisions like me stopping early. Cause I could trim that out and make it smooth, right? So the transitions in there and then the scoop just starts kind of invisibly, but I like that. And then I'll trim this part round like that a little bit. So I like this to be rounded here. Now we'll come back with, so I got to clean all this up and I'll come back with a rib and force bend this rib over like a little bit like this. See, I'm flexing that and I'll bring that down on top of here very gently to kind of make this nice and round and beautiful like that. And then, and then I'll really smooth it out. I may wet it down a little bit like that and really just smooth it out as best I can. Sometimes I screw up that notch. So guess what? I can use this guy here, this corner here, and trim that notch back in. Cause it's so delicate, me sometimes fooling around, I mess it up. So sometimes I'll trim that notch in just a little bit, like just to make it sharper, because it's okay for that to be super sharp turn. And this, this part at the top part of the notch, to be super sharp because the glaze is just gonna fill that in and make it kind of smooth. That makes sense, it doesn't matter, something that small. And then you sign your name and you're good and then let's talk about flipping it over. So normally I would have cleaned up all these crumbs but we're just gonna skip that part and let's peel it off and let's take a look. Now, when you've trimmed it this much, Picking it up is a problem, right? Because you see that before I was grabbing by the foot and lifting, it's all like, like I lost all the lumps and bumps. It's all like smooth. It's hard for me to grab hold of. And I trimmed off the main thing that was keeping it together. The thick foot was kind of giving it all its strength, all that extra clay. So I use, do not try to pick this up. You want to flip it over onto a clean bat. So I'll clean this one off. Right, so I have this bat here. I'm just gonna scrape all the clay off. Give me a second. Whew. Oh, I'll put all that junk on there. And then I make sure it's clean because there's so much foot here. I love, I don't like getting my foot all scratched up or anything. And then I will sandwich the two and I just pick it up like that and flip it over. Now, through the trimming process, often you'll feel this part right here, especially in the middle, that this is bulged upwards just a little bit. That's, you don't necessarily want that. You want this flat. So you just gently, very gently push that down and then you can feel it to see if it's flattened out. You just wanna make sure when you're doing that that you haven't pushed that foot too shallow so that you don't, can't glaze it anymore. So, or if, I, if that actually happens, right? Let's flip it back over, right? And if this now is protruding too far up, I would trim it a little more or wait for it to dry and trim it a little bit more. Because for me, I just like to go for it. Have, and so I have enough space there. I like to go for it and have that space in there to trim. I'm always trying to make the best pot I can right? Not necessarily make it the fastest way I can or anything like that. I just want excellence. Every pot I try to make tries to be better, right? And if it takes me twice as long to make it a little bit better, I'm going to, right? Because it's about the struggle and the journey, right? And it's about this pot being good and the next pot being better. That makes sense always for me. That makes sense to everybody. Any questions? Oh, and then you sign your name and all that. And then think about always also in the end, be thinking about glazing, like what colors you want to see, right? It doesn't have to be a very complex thing, right? 
If you just like blue, you can just make the whole thing blue. If you want to have two colors, you can make the rim one color and this another color. You, this is now a great surface to start applying underglaze. This is a gorgeous surface to carve, right? So some of you that have been carving, when you're car carving on a round surface, it's hard to keep your tool the same depth because as you're carving across, that surface is always turning away, right? And we're not used to that. We're used to drawing on paper. This is most like paper out of almost any kind of pottery you can do, right? I can carve, this surface is really flat. It's really easy and it reads really well, where you carve on a cylinder, right? You can't see the other side, right? Maybe you're doing like, I don't know, mammoths attack and wolves attacking mammoths, right? You put mammoths on one side of the cylinder and put wolves on the other, people can't see both of your images at the same, they don't know, they just see mammoth and wolf, they don't see them interacting, right? Here you put mammoth and wolves, you know, fighting each other or whatever, right? Whatever scene you want, it presents the most like a piece of paper. Right, you can read it all at once. So for those of you who like doing decorative stuff, here it is, right? This is it. Any questions? All right, so make some plates, you have to make four, if you're throwing, right? If you're the thrower side. 